Moshi Moshi. Hello. I'm Zev Ramsbotham. And I'm Annie Ramsbotham. And we're the Rambling Ramsbothams. Our journey might be rambling, but we hope this podcast isn't. What are we talking about this week? Wow. Well, today we're talking about disposing of trash in Japan, a new laughing rule, and ice cream flavors, among other random things. But yeah. first, what was yesterday? Tanabana. <laughs> that was said in the most American accent. <laughs> But it's a holiday that happened uh, yesterday, which was July seventh, seven seven. Do you know what it? Do you know what it celebrates? I know it's like the story we talked about this last year. I think it's the story about the star-crossed lovers yeah. that I think the princess was promised away, but yeah. then they were too in love, so the father separated them, and now they can only meet once a year. Yeah, it's kind of Romeo and Juliet esque, but, but no you- one died. Yeah, they didn't die. They just got exiled to be on the opposite sides of the Milky Way forever, except for one day a year. When they just kind of come a little bit close. They come <laughs> to like the banks of the river and they can shout at each other. Yeah, but Orihime is the princess and Hikoboshi is the cow herder. And he's, they're in love. And since they like spend too much time with each other, the princess's dad was like, all right, none of this. Like, yeah, you're think, shirking your duties. Yeah, she was like some super famous. I think she made clothes. She was like a weaver oh, or something. maybe. I don't know that part. <laughs> yeah, I think that she was like really good at something. It was like oh, weaving. And I think he right. was like a super hard worker. And he, he was, was really cow good herder. at cow herding. But yeah, they were, they were giving up their duties because they spent too much time together. Yeah, they're represented by the stars Altair and Vega. And so on July 7th every year... I don't know if that is actually the year or the time of year when Altair and Vega in real life are closest, but I think it is. I it's think, at least the day that, that has been picked to celebrate this folktale. I think it's one of those holidays, though, where there are two celebrations. Because oh, there's yeah, the because old the lunar Gregorian calendar. calendar, and, yeah, the lunar calendar. and there's the modern calendar. So I think some parts of Japan celebrate Tanabata, I think, in August mm. and summer in July. Kind of like... Um, I guess that makes sense. Oban, yeah. I think, does that too, where there are two different months. Well, people write their wishes on colorful strips of paper and then they hang them on bamboo. And I don't really know how that's related to the star-crossed lovers. I guess they wish that they could be together. But this time of year, you'll see a lot of bamboo stalks. Even if it's not actually growing bamboo, people will like cut down bamboo branches and take them as decoration and things and then tie little strips of paper and wishes and paper chains and things. And they're kind of all over the place. Like um, they were in a grocery store that we went to, (laughs) kind of in the dining area of the grocery store. You could write your wish. They had it in the school. You could do it. I was on a bike ride downtown and across the Asanogawa, which is the smaller of the two rivers, there's this bridge that's like pedestrian only bridge. They had a bunch of wishes. People were, you could line up and put your wish on the bridge. So this is, it's the holiday that I'm maybe from an American perspective, most fond of because of the decorations. Oh, really? You like the way they look? Yeah. So there, there was, um, that game I used to play when I was in like high school, Final Fantasy 11. It was Mm. the first online Final Fantasy, but they would do seasonal events. And they had Tanabata? They didn't call it Tanabata. I can't remember what they called it, but it was kind of like a, it was like a summer like event in the game. summer festival. <laughs> yeah, but it kind of had a lot rolled into one. Mm. Like there was Tanabata, so you could have, they had the bamboo decorations with the little paper, mm. like wishes tied to them. But then there was also kind of like summer festival where there were fireworks oh, and yeah. you could wear like a yukata in the game. It's fun. Yeah, it's a big deal. So in my imagination, when I think about Tanabata, that's what I think about hmm. is Final Fantasy XI. That's cozy. Yeah. But yeah, we've been slowly packing things up and getting ready to move, I guess. I've been kind of in denial, but yeah, it's July and we're leaving pretty soon. I know. So- <laughs> this is my, so I have, next week is my last week of work because mm-hmm. the way I have it arranged, sometimes it depends on your kind of like prefecture and your supervisor, but for me, they're okay with me using paid time off to mm-hmm. essentially like to leave early yeah like of. quit working before my contract ends i can't like leave japan <laughs> like you're not yeah. allowed like you can't i don't think you can do that but i can use the rest of my paid time off so i have this that week cool. and then next week the 19th is my last day of work and then once you're out of work i'm gonna get you to help me clean the house and actually like 
move, I guess, because well, we've yeah, just I mean, been that's... denying it. But <laughs> I, we have this month, uh, I mean, the month just started, it's only July 8th, but we have started actually taking things to, uh, not the dump, but like getting rid of large trash items and starting to take like recycling out that I've been delaying. Like, for example, the tops of jam jars, you, so in Japan, you have to separate your recycling. And I didn't know what the top of jam jars went into for the longest time. So I was just like, well, I'll deal with that later. So we had a little collection. Yeah, now it's later. And I have like a whole bag full of jam jar tops that I finally had to figure out where they go today. They go we in- did the same thing with batteries. And then Annie learned that batteries are burnable garbage yeah. in the town that we live in. <laughs> so we burned the batteries. Yeah, so we had this like stash of batteries because we were like, surely you have to take the like batteries to a special dump a not earth friendly thing to do, but oh well. Yeah. But the um, jam jar lids, they go in the steel. I I thought that they were steel. They seemed, they seemed seemed robust. Really? They seemed way lighter than that, but really? I thought they had a nice, like, (laughs) you know, firmness to them. (laughs) Some nice jam jar. I actually had a student and it made me think about this and I didn't say anything because you kind of encounter these comments fairly regularly, but I had a student at a night school he was talking about his work. He's a trash like collector. Hmm. And he specifically said, yeah, I have, always have to work really hard at this one apartment complex because it's where a bunch of foreigners live and they oh don't no. know how to sort trash. Oh, no. Yeah. And I was like standing there and I was like, OK. Yeah. How does he know? I know because I didn't want to bring up the fact like, well, we have people that live in our apartment complex that put their trash out on the wrong night. <laughs> I will say that, so I went today to take out the recycling and we're lucky in our town that there's a free place you can take it. And I mean, I don't know how common this is. I think in the city of Kanazawa, you do have to pay if you take re-recycling on a different day, but in the town of Uchinata, you don't. So I went over to that recycling area and there is a guy that works there who knows me now because there was one day that I had sorted all of the cans and metal items and tuna cans are aluminum, I thought, but I didn't know that we had been buying different brands. And so some of the tuna cans were steel and some were aluminum. And I just dumped a whole box of like aluminum cans and tuna things into this big box of aluminum. And he was like, no, no, no. <laughs> but it was too late. Like I'd already dumped the entire like contents. So then I had to go back through and sort out all the steel cans. But I actually was confused at first because I didn't realize there was a difference. And he mm-hmm. had to explain to me, like, this symbol means steel and this symbol means aluminum and it's not the same thing. Yeah, I really so, hope that it's one of those things where our efforts are actually being rewarded. Well, he was there today and I was he was he actually came over to me when I started to dump my metal in and he was like, "Hi, like how's it going?" <laughs> and I was like, "Look what I did. I sorted it." And he was like, "Good job." So, yeah, well, I, I didn't mean like that, like socially, I meant like environmentally. Oh. Cuz you hear a lot of stories that everything just goes to the incinerator. Yeah. That you sort it, but then they can't really recycle everything and they have too much trash mm. to actually recycle. So you do all this work to sort it, and then they just burn it all mm. anyway. <laughs> so That is unfortunate. I mean, I hope that's not what ha- is happening. Yeah, me too. So I, I think in my head, I tell myself, like, we're really doing it. Well, know? at least it's being sorted. You know, like, I don't mind helping take the extra step to sort it. Because in America, we did sort, sort of. We we'd sort it into garbage and recycling, and that's it. They didn't sort anything further than that. Yeah, because usually in America, that goes through, like, a facility... Where, again, the dream is that the facility, you know, has, like, the magnets and the different conveyor belts. And it, like, sorts yeah, everything itself. Yeah, it works. And so we hope, yeah, like... But that's why I feel better about taking the extra time here. Because then it's like, well, if it's already sorted, then hopefully that's one less step and one less expense. So maybe it actually will be recycled. But, we yeah, what, so. what are you supposed to do if you have an oversized piece what if of you trash? Got big trash. Yeah. And this How is something... How big are we talking? Real big. Like, you know... No. Gargantuan. <laughs> like how big? Like, I guess bigger than a microwave. Yeah, I guess it would be like household goods. So yeah, like a sofa or really something that can't fit in the designated trash bag that the town sells you. If it's bigger than that, mm-hmm. you need to take it to a special place. But and it this includes is... huge things like a couch or a bed or yeah, a bike. Yeah. and But this is something that I was like worried about mm-hmm. going into Japan. 
Because I hear about bad things. Yeah, you hear about it all the time. And there are always these stories about how ALTs try and like con each other because someone will move into an apartment and their predecessor essentially left a ton of garbage, Mm -hmm. but tried to like pass it off as like, this is nice furniture and you Mm -hmm. should buy it from me. But they just didn't want to get rid of the furniture. Yeah, they didn't want to get rid of it. And then they kind of like scam this person coming in. And this is a common story. Like you Mm -hmm. hear it all the time. And usually the reasoning is... It's expensive. Oh, yeah, in Japan, it's expensive to get rid of stuff, or it's really difficult. Yeah, so I was but, worried about that too. Yeah, but not if you're Annie, because she's we again mastered out. the trash system. <laughs> I had to throw away my Mamachari, my bike. I didn't have to throw it away. I guess I could have taken it to a bike shop, but to be honest, we bought the bike in a box online for like $150. I think it was like two mon, and Maybe. so. Maybe if that. Yeah. It was like the cheapest bike we could find. And it served me very well. I rode it all the time back and forth to Kanazawa and it is very rusty. (laughs) And it was so... Yeah, we live at the ocean. We just left it outside. Yeah. And so it was no longer shifting. And so I felt bad about giving it to anybody. No one was going to buy it. So I was like, well, I mean, yes, it's a huge piece of metal that probably could be fixed, but I'm just going to throw it away. So it was, and bikes are listed on one of the large, on the things that can be picked up for oversized garbage day. So I scheduled, I had, I had my friend actually help. Well, you do in Uchinata, I don't know if this is true for most of Japan, but at least here, there's an oversized garbage day once a month and they'll come to your house or apartment and pick up your oversized garbage if you leave it outside. The like caveat is that you have to let them know that you're going to be doing that and so you have to schedule at least a week ahead and tell them hi i have this bike can you pick it up and they're like sure um and so they give you a number and they're like write down my number was 395 i guess it's random they're like write down your number and then we'll know when we pick it up that like we'll check that one off the list and so then once you've registered that you're throwing away a large piece of garbage you go and buy a oversized garbage ticket. And in our case, we can buy these at the convenience store. I think you can also buy them at town hall or I don't know, probably anything like that. But yeah, we just walked to the convenience store. I asked them if they had oversized garbage tickets and I paid 800 yen, which is like five bucks. Yeah. So it's not, it's not like free to get no. rid of big trash and you do have to plan ahead. So I think really what happens is probably so many people get to the end of their contract mm-hmm. and then they panic because they've missed the garbage days. Yeah, it only happens once a month. Yeah, and I guess like if you have a car, you could drive the garbage somewhere, but it does become more involved. And I don't know if we could fit that that bike in the car because you can't take the wheel off or that anything. That one folded and you could take the wheels off, but it's just way it's more rusty. difficult. <laughs> so yeah, it's just like more difficult. So I imagine a lot of people get to the end of their contract and kind of panic and then yeah. they just end up leaving things. Because it's also interesting because a lot of contracts, the ALT moves into the apartment that the previous ALT was in. Mm-hmm. So it's so easy. To just leave stuff. Yeah, just to leave stuff. But mm-hmm. for us, like, we have to move out. Because yeah, so, we just have the landlord who's going to come and make sure, like, just a regular rent, you know? Like, okay, their contract's over. Is the house ready to rent by the next person? Yeah. And then there are a couple Which other layers. actually nicer. I kind of like that. You know, like, then nicer. there's no liability. Yeah. And there are other layers, too, like... We're leaving stuff. We are leaving some things for the person that's replacing me. But I was up front with it like them and trying to tell them like, you know, it is a little bit more difficult to get rid of stuff. You can't just throw stuff away all the mm-hmm. time. So I gave them like a list of stuff that we could leave. And then I said, you know, if you don't want it, we'll yeah, get if you don't rid want it, it, like we'll get rid of it. <laughs> and part of that, too, was like some of it has to be stored at the school mm-hmm. because there will be a gap in between the leases, which is really nice. The school's doing that. Really nice, but also it would just be so awkward. Imagine yeah. if I just took a bunch of like garbage over yeah. to the school. I was like, yeah, the next person wants this stuff. <laughs> they'd be like, do they? Yeah, they'd be like, they want like all of this broken stuff. Like, yeah. Even some of the stuff we got was a little bit kind of like that. Mm. It was like. But I think your predecessor lived very frugally and was pretty upfront about that. He was like, none of it's nice, but it's free. So if you want it. <laughs> yeah, there were just some things that he didn't mention. Mm-hmm. That showed up. <laughs> that was like, <laughs> I wasn't upset about, but I was kind of like, oh, I don't think he mentioned this like vacuum or iron and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, but it was, it, it all worked. So it wasn't trash, but yeah. 
So besides Oversized Garbage Day, which is once a month and you have to register, there's also Regular Trash Day, which is, it's Regular Trash Day, but it's only Burnable Trash Day. So you have to sort out, which we didn't do this in America. It was just like, is it garbage? It was either, is it recyclable or not? And you could even throw away recycle things. I mean, no one, there was no law. There's just kind yeah, of no messed up thing to do. But yeah, you could just throw anything you want in the dumpster in America. <laughs> well, also actually where we lived, we paid for recycling mm. because the county didn't, like where we lived, we would have had to take it in to America. the dump to recycle it. And so we had that company that would come to where we live that we paid and they would come pick up the recycling yeah. and then they would take it. Which is convenient, but yeah, it's not an incentive for people to recycle. <laughs> well, yeah, if, if I was like one of my neighbors that's like in the super rural town, mm -hmm. I'd probably be like, well, I can either pay to throw this stuff away or I can just put it in my garbage can and then yeah. the town will pick it up. Well, in Japan, you're supposed to sort between burnable and non-burnable. And then, so for example, we can't forget that in two days is our final non-burnable day because that only happens once every two weeks or once a month. And that's yeah. when you can put things out that aren't recyclable or burnable. And it's not a huge list of things. It's kind of like clothes hangers, umbrellas. Which is weird because, we, as we mentioned earlier, we figured out that batteries are burnable garbage. Yeah, so why aren't clothes hangers? Like, and you can even, burn a battery. <laughs> yeah, so even for a little while, we had this, like, little box full of used bike tires because we change our tires fairly often. And I was like accumulating this box of tires because I was like, you know, it's kind of like a pain. I'm sure we'll have to figure out which day is the special tire day. <laughs> we looked into it. Bike tires are burnable garbage. That just... one does change because I have friends that live in Gunma Prefecture and they have to take tires somewhere special. Okay. So I don't know if our town is just, I don't know if other places burn batteries. I can't get over that one. But yeah. So yeah, there, we'll have to remember the non-burnable day. But I found out today how what to do with things that are non-burnable. Like, say you missed non-burnable day or you missed this, like, oversized garbage day. There is There are facilities that you can take things to. You just have to have a car. But, yeah, I figured out I'm going to go to the Komatsu Clean Center. And um, it's kind of interesting the way they do it. So, so it's for bulk items, I guess, like a lot of trash at once. Because it's uh, 100 yen for... 10 kilograms which is like 22 pounds that's like nothing <laughs> yeah, I was gonna you throw say, a lot of trash away for cheap yeah so basically according to the website which i haven't been there yet but you pull up and you drive your car over this little weigh station this giant scale and they weigh your car and then you you drive into the sorting facility i guess and they're pretty clear on the website that like you have to throw things away like they're not mm. gonna you can't just sit in your car and they're gonna take it out for you so yeah. whatever you bring in you have to like deal with but they have a sorting area there so there's recycling and trash and that's kind of like going to the landfill yeah in america except they don't weigh you in america yeah, they do. oh they do yeah if you go to the landfill like if you go to the county landfill they'll weigh your like truck as you drive in and then you have to pay on the way out i must have gone to a landfill where it they just don't don't care. <laughs> the only landfill I've been to, you just pull up and throw it in the dumpster. Yeah, I don't know where you went. I don't know. Because the one time I was helping Little our buddy um, Patrick move, and we used one of the camp's trucks. Oh, really? We had to go through the whole process. That oh, they, like, well, then people listening are like, yeah, this is not mind-blowing. Yeah, this part's so... not mind-blowing. No. Oh, I thought it was so interesting, because oh. clearly I've never been to a weighable <laughs> landfill. So, yeah, you throw your things away, and then you drive out, and you go on a different scale, and then they charge you based on the difference your car weighs. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so... there was something else, like, about it. No, not <laughs> so it's, really. It's just a normal landfill. <laughs> Except as normal landfills, in, well, normal, I guess for us, do American landfills have recycling in the landfill? I was under the impression it was just kind of like, throw it in and we'll deal with it. Like, yeah, I think it. it depends on where you go. I've been, no. the one had a recycling center on the outside, so you could pull up to this one like big area and then you could do the recycling there. And then there was like the landfill that you kept driving to. Hmm. So it was kind of like a two in one situation. Well, I'm going to experience that this week, I guess, when I drive the car over to the landfill or the, it's, I, sorry, it's the clean center. <laughs> it's, I'm sure it's very clean over there. Yeah. It probably doesn't smell bad. They don't do anything weird. <laughs> it's cheap and sound, sounds very convenient. So I'll let you know. Yeah, but that's exciting. So we've been kind of 
Yeah, yeah figuring out. out the difference between how you deal with your trash in America versus uh, Japan. Speaking of American things, it's unrelated to trash, but um, I saw some chips in the grocery store. Sorry, in the convenience store. And they, one was Texas barbecue flavor. And right next to it was American barbecue. So I can't, I, I should have bought both and had a little taste test. But it kind of made me laugh because isn't that the same thing? The I only guess. difference on the label was it was Texas BBQ sauce was this was the flavor. And then the other was American barbecue spelled out. Like in katakana, but <laughs> so maybe they're trying to make a difference between like a barbecue, like with hot dogs and hamburgers. Maybe one's like meat flavor, and the other is yeah. like that kind of sweet sauce flavor. Yeah, like one is an American style barbecue, <laughs> like where you're <laughs> grilling stuff I at guess. your house, and then the other one is BBQ, like this one is. But then it, I I kind of get it. It would almost make more sense if it was another style. Or if it wasn't Texas and America, it's like, that is America. <laughs> yeah. Or if it was like, this is North Carolina barbecue and this is Texas barbecue. Mm. That would make sense because there is a pretty big difference between regional sauces. barbecues and the regional sauces and how they make it. I should it. have bought the two chip flavors. I don't know why I didn't, but I just kind of laughed and then yeah, was we got like, a little taste test. Yeah. Maybe we'll walk down to the convenience store tonight, <laughs> see if the one in, in our town has the the two different American and Texas barbecue flavors. Well, we were actually there last night and didn't they, they had Texas. They didn't have American. Mm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's well, a mystery. Speaking of flavors, there's, um, well, we've been eating a lot of ice cream recently and there's Listen. a lot of fun flavors in Japan. How much ice cream is too much ice cream though? I think you could have ice cream every day. I think so too. And I've told some of my coworkers that, and they've been flabbergasted i know on that health check when it was like i chew I faster than I, people yeah. or like i walk faster it was like i eat sweets and then like check the box and it was like every day occasionally yeah. and I, I put every day i, I was, was like i eat sweets my every day <laughs> yeah that's when i was filming out with my coworker, and I, I did the same thing i said every day and he was like really <laughs> i was like yeah man <laughs> like Every and there's day. no quantifier after that. Like, am I having like a pint of ice cream every day? No. Am I having like a bite of chocolate every day? Yes. <laughs> and they did the thing which annoys me where they didn't ask any questions about like lifestyle. Mm. Like, do you exercise? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't. And then one of the things that I think there was like an exercise question, but it was like, how many steps do you take every day? Mm hmm. And I was like, listen, I don't take any steps. <laughs> I ride my bike a lot, but then I sit as much as I can when I'm not on my bike. Yeah, I so guess my so. stepping is like abysmal. Like if you just looked at how many steps I take every day, mm -hmm. you'd be like, my take God. A different kind of cardio. Yeah, this man is sedentary. Uh, yeah, so I right after the like, how often do you eat sweets? It's like, do you intend to change your habits? And I was like, don't intend to change. Yeah, I <laughs> eat got an it. ice cream every day. Um, this is I'm fine with this. If anything, I can eat more ice cream. <laughs> I could have it for breakfast. Well, especially in the summer when it's really hot. But I guess or that's especially why... in Ishikawa. Why? Ice cream capital of Japan. Not Kanazawa is the ice cream capital. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Kanazawa is the self proclaimed ice cream capital of Japan, but I believe it. I mean, there's a ton of ice cream places here and there's a lot of, I don't know if there's a lot of fun flavors in all of Japan, but there's a lot of fun flavors in Kanazawa. And so that's why to bring it back to flavors, <laughs> that's why I was bringing up the ice cream thing because we went to a new ice cream place this week, the Noto Milk Factory, uh, yeah. which must have a location in Noto. <laughs> it must have a location in Noto, which is a town on the Noto Peninsula you know like north of kanazawa but this noto milk factory was in kanazawa so this must be a branch or maybe of they just buy their milk from noto maybe they don't have to be up there they but they had uh i got black sesame which is kind of like a peanut buttery flavor almost yeah it and tastes then, a lot like peanut or it's very uh, reminiscent wow. of peanut butter <laughs> and then the more interesting one was it was noto mountain vegetable ice cream i thought it was kaga kaga vegetable oh maybe it was kaga yeah they were kind of like regional i think they had oh, kind of okay. there was like so kaga vegetables maybe there was, it was like the south so kaga is the southern the yeah. southwestern part of Ishikawa. there was like the noto sea salt mm. and i saw another region but i can't remember what it was well either way it was like mountain vegetable ice cream and it was green and mm. so i thought oh i'll have that so healthy 
Well, I'm just curious, you know, because you can't make ice cream that tastes bad. Otherwise, why would they even bother? No, you can. Have you had bad ice cream? Yeah, absolutely. Like what? Are you forgetting when we went to that Mexican restaurant and we got the bubblegum ice cream? Oh, yeah. And it was terrible. <laughs> it this was is awful. in America. No, yeah. no, this was in... No, it was in America. Yeah, okay, It was it like was. your Nana's birthday or yeah, something. Yeah, everything was going so good and then we ordered dessert. And yeah, it was we were feeling like ice cream. a little adventurous. Like, yeah, let's get some dessert. I don't to even be think fair, we, we ordered, didn't order bubblegum flavor. Yeah, we ordered ice cream. You know and it how... came out and it was like bubblegum flavored ice cream with like chiclets in it. It was yeah. awful. Which maybe people are listening and they're like, oh man, I love that chiclet ice cream. Yeah, that's but true. Sorry if you really like. I was picturing, so it was. <laughs> and remember it had like cornflakes on because it. Because it was called deep fried ice cream. <laughs> oh yeah. But then and we were like, oh, that'd be fun. Let's end this birthday celebration with some deep fried ice cream. Ooh. And then we order it and it <laughs> it's a ball of bubblegum ice cream rolled in cornflakes. And <laughs> I was like. fried about it. Yeah, this is not deep fried ice cream, but you know, it's okay. They tried. So we have had bad ice cream. <laughs> Thankfully, in Japan, I've come close with a yogurt drink. Well, that's not ice cream. It was the Coolish, and it was the Ramune flavor, uh, and that was really bad. It's like soft serve in a tube. Coolish. Yeah, but it's like a yogurt. It's like frozen yogurt, but it was and not Ramune good. is like a, a kind of blue raspberry. Also, like a bubblegummy flavored soda. It's yeah. like a very sweet soda. Anyway, the ice cream that we got at NMF. <laughs> it was wow. really good yeah noto or the kaga mountain vegetable was kind of like green tea honestly like if it tastes like matcha it's had an earthy yeah if they hadn't told me what flavor it was i would have just thought it was green tea ice cream mm -hmm. but it was good and then what what did you have i can remember one flavor i got the salt salty milk and um blueberry yeah I got salt and blueberry yeah. which actually works they that worked really well together they did i'm a just master of flavor profiling when it comes to I feel like ice you cream. just picked two random ones, but yeah. I did. I like blueberry. And again, so this is like childhood me video games. In the video game Kingdom Hearts 2, mm. one of the main things that one of the characters that you first play as does is he's really into sea salt ice cream. Hmm. And so whenever I see like salted caramel or here in Japan, they actually do have salt ice cream. Yeah. Sometimes I get it because of that video game. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. I had never heard of it before Japan. Like, so the place Nota Milk Factory, I think it was just salty milk ice cream, like sea salt ice cream. Yeah, because we actually, remember we did get just, it was like vanilla ice cream in Noto, and you mm. sprinkled the sea salt on it. Yeah, that so was pretty good. I think it was probably that similar idea. Mm -hmm. Like it was just like milk. It's kind of like salt, car salted caramel, but without the caramel flavor, yeah. I guess. The kind of salty sweet thing. But yeah, later I went... uh on a different bike ride, and I stopped at a, a gelateria. I don't know how you pronounce that. Like a place that sells gelato. But I don't actually know what gelato is, because I thought it had egg in it, and this doesn't have egg in it. So maybe they're just using that word because it sounds fancy. Yeah, I think they're just going for some Italian marketing, maybe. Well, it was really good and creamy. But I got plum ice cream, gelato, I guess, because I saw the flavor, and it was called um, sumomo. And, I, which is surprising because Japanese plum is ume. I thought it was ume. But my friend was telling me the other day that that's not actually a plum. You know how, I, I guess like in America, I always talked about ume as like, oh, it's Japanese plum. Well, that's, we talked about this actually once before on the podcast too. That's just how it gets translated. Mm. Yeah, because my friend was like, it's not plum at all. It's just, it's an ume. Mm -hmm. And you can't eat it raw. Yeah, it's like its own thing. Yeah. So then when I saw this and it was sumomo... And it was translated as plum. I was like, oh, well, I'll try this because this actually is plum. And the other flavor that I got was miso and cheese. <laughs> because This is a little strange. Yeah, because I saw it. And again, I was like, mountain vegetable, miso and cheese. Like, you can't just make these flavors. It's like a People will never come back. Board. Yeah. <laughs> so I tried them both. The plum was a lot like plums in America, but it was it was more tart, I guess. So that was very good. And then the miso and cheese, to be honest, the cheese was more like cream cheese, not like savory cheese, but the miso added some salt. Uh, so mm. that was kind of nice. Delicious. Yeah. You know, we're going to sound really dumb Why? because the three differences between gelato and ice cream is that gelato uses less cream and more milk than ice cream hmm, I would and not typically have guessed that. contains no egg yolk 
or eggs at all. Oh, that's good. And gelato is served slightly warmer than American ice cream and is also churned at a slower rate, introducing less air into the product. Well, you learn something new every day. I don't know about the Noto Milk Factory then. I mean, I guess that was just ice cream. Yeah, I got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I just. <laughs> well, thank you for that. But the listener will be shocked to know that we did indeed, indeed buy milk at the Noto Milk Factory. Why would they be shocked? Well, I know, it sounds like we only went there for ice cream. We did only go there for ice cream, and then we walked in, and then you were like, oh my gosh, milk. <laughs> I was partially like looking to go there because we could buy milk. Really? Yeah. Why? Well, you know. couldn't get enough milk at the grocery store? Well, the pictures made it look very appealing. Mm. It was a nice glass bottle of milk. It is. It was a very aesthetic bottle. And I assumed it's a milk factory. They have to have <laughs> some kind of high quality <laughs> milk. I will say, I don't like just drinking milk, but I liked that milk. It was probably very... like. It was whole milk, probably, I don't know. Yeah, all, I don't know. It didn't have really it. any details. But this is like another thing. If you're coming to Japan, the way that they break dairy down is, I guess, different. Like, you know, everyone really makes fun of the United States for having like cheese product mm -hmm. where, you know, it's not really like cheese. Like American Craft Singles. Yeah. But in Japan, they do the exact same thing. There's like dairy product yeah. that sometimes you'll buy cheese or even you'll buy milk yeah. and then you'll find out. Wait, this isn't milk. I had to stop buying these cheese shreds because then when I actually translated the ingredients, they were like, it's cheese product shred. <laughs> and it was basically just like hydrogenated fat yeah, or something. Yeah, it wasn't actually... That they like pressed into cheese There was very shape. little dairy in it. <laughs> yeah, so you kind of have to be a little careful with like reading labels. And there are a few different kanji depending on the type of product it is. Which I guess is fair. Like, you know, it's a food... The food in Japan doesn't really have a lot of dairy products in it traditionally, so... Yeah, I'm not saying it's, like, a bad thing. No. I just think it's funny that we catch a lot of rap, like, as Americans, that people mm. are like, oh, like, your food. But then we're in a country and we're like, wait, but they they do it too. <laughs> <But> <laughs> they why also is, have American crafts. Why is singles? no one making fun of the Japanese dairy product? Good thing they have you to make fun of the Japanese dairy product. Yeah. Well, I want to go back to the gelato place because they also had a soy sauce and chocolate flavor sounds really good i don't know it just sounds like a richer uh, chocolate and mm -hmm. then miso caramel and walnut which to be honest sounds much more appetizing than miso cheese but i couldn't not order the miso cheese <laughs> it's fair and then they had an amazake and blueberry so amazake is a sweet uh like fermented well i guess all all sake is fermented but it's got rice chunks in it still mm -hmm. and it's I think very it's less, little alcohol yeah it's less alcoholic i would also go back to the noto milk factory because there were honestly so many flavors it was hard to pick mm. but i kind of went with a couple basic ones but they had much more adventurous flavors like vegetable <laughs> like vegetable and there were a couple other things too that i was like man i could have gotten those well we can go this week when you have your last day of work at the high school downtown that downtown high school <laughs> I will be going back there on yeah Friday. Yeah, we can. But it is my last day celebrate there. Celebrate with ice cream. It's, it was a really weird year at that school. Well, I think it's a I, unique I only school went, in general. Like, yeah, well, I only went like three times. Yeah, because it was on Friday. Worked there. I know, so I feel kind of weird showing up and being like, "Hey." Well, I mean, you're on the schedule for it, so I guess you'll just yeah. show up one more time, and then thanks for the memories. I My guess. coworker was trying to ask me what it's like there, and I was mm. trying to describe it, and he thought it was just so funny. Oh, <laughs> Cause, well, it's just not really. It's just a different kind of school. Yeah, I told him like what happened the last time I was there, and I was trying to explain it. That first, the kid like only wanted to study math, and the teacher was like, "Well, it's English, it's English class." So we got. But he was like, "Yeah, but the math teacher is scary, Aww. and if I don't do well, like, poor guy, you could have studied math in English." Yeah, I know. That's kind of what I joked about, but we were like, no, we can't do that. And mm -hmm. then we spent the rest of the class. He was just showing us pictures of his pet lizards. And you and don't, and like, you don't have to get him back on track? Listen. I, I guess because you're, uh, you're the assistant teacher. You just have to follow the teacher lead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the teacher is supposed to be doing, it's kind of like a weird because there's not really any disciplining because they are like kind of adults. Yeah. They're often older. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just like a tricky... It's just a different kind of school, I guess. Yeah. Well, 
now that we've established you should eat ice cream once a day, especially in the summer, you were telling me about a news article about something else you should do once a day. Yeah, this is why you married me. Is it? Yeah. Right? Well, what's the thing we should do once a day? Laugh. Wow. Live, laugh, love. <laughs> <laughs> See? Okay. Oh. So you're bringing this up because there's a law, <laughs> which doesn't make well, it seem very, like, it's, it's fun. It's an ordinance. <laughs> Yeah. So Japan does this thing. We've talked about it before. One of the ones specifically that we're like really in the know about because we're cyclists is the whole helmet thing where you're supposed to make the best effort that you can to wear a helmet, but there's no law saying that you have to wear a helmet unless maybe the city you live in specifically has like made a law. Yeah. I guess you're supposed to do it, but there's no, uh, there's no like repercussions. <laughs> So similarly, this Yamagata, so the entire prefecture of Yamagata, passed an ordinance that is highly encouraging you to laugh every day. Once a day. Once a day. And it's based on some study that a university in Yamagata prefecture did that shows like the direct correlation between like psychological and even physical health. If you laugh often. I mean, I get it, but it's just so funny because it doesn't really work like that. You can't just tell people like, all right, everybody, we're having fun in here. <laughs> you guys better better have a good time today at work or else. Yeah, so it was like an everyday, like every citizen of Yamagata should be laughing. Um, yeah, they, it says that they ask business operators to develop a workplace environment filled with laughter. Yeah. It sounds and then, a little dystopian. I know. It really, it does. And then they designated, um, I think it's every like Thursday or something is like laughter day oh. where they really like focus on it. But <laughs> then, bring a clown into the workplace or something. I don't know. But then the most dystopian part to me was the idea that the major party that pushed it through was like the biggest party in the prefecture. But there were two other political parties that were not okay with it. And their reasoning, the first, was that the human rights of those who have difficulties laughing due to illness or other reason must not be undermined. Mm. And he was a member of another political party. Okay. Which I kind of get, but it's okay for people to laugh, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, is he just saying that no one ever No should... one can laugh because not everyone can laugh. Yeah, because and then what does that mean that due to illness or other reasons they can't laugh? Yeah, or maybe, I mean, it would be weird if you're, like, having a bad day, and then your boss is like, you have to laugh today. Like, you have to smile. Like, that's kind of messed up. Yeah. Like, you could just be allowed to, like, have your emotions. Yeah. So, I agree with that. But also, just the whole thing is weird. Like, why did they even pass a law that was know. like, we must laugh? <laughs> and then the other political party said to laugh or not to laugh is one of the fundamental human rights guaranteed by the Constitution hmm. reg regarding freedom of thought and creed as well as an inner freedom. I mean, I also agree with that. Like, you have freedom of thought, freedom of emotion. Like, they shouldn't pass laws telling you what you should feel every day. Yeah, so the party's response was the ordinance does not force people to laugh. Hmm. It also emphasizes the respect for an individual's personal decision. Hmm. To laugh or not to laugh. <laughs> why even bother making an ordinance? I mean, that's why I guess it's not a law. It's just kind of a, like, we strongly suggest you should laugh every day. Uh, yeah, it's like, just so yeah, weird. We, obviously. <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of like one of those things where, I don't know, I think a lot of government, I think governments worldwide do this, but since we live in Japan, we're kind of, we notice this a lot. But it's kind of like, hey, why don't you do something like fix something else yeah about fix health. the underlying issue or do something funny like if you <laughs> as a prefecture think that people should laugh instead of passing yeah, like, an ordinance telling people to laugh or something yeah organize every month organize something like stand-up comedy or something yeah. i don't know like do something that will make your citizens laugh instead of being like hey you guys <laughs> it's a law now you have yeah to laugh. you guys need to laugh and especially in the businesses, they need to laugh. And then the dramatic, like, the drama of the other parties, their statements, when there are other, <laughs> like, actual kind of, like... Issues. Too. Yeah, human rights <laughs> kind of issues. Like, there was also an unfortunate um, news story about this 
like woman born in Japan, but her father's Nigerian. She's never been to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. She got denied like going to apply for a job because they assumed she was a foreigner. Yeah, which is pretty messed up. Yeah, and then they kept calling her... Like foreign a, born or yeah, something. Yeah, a resident of foreign origins. Which is so... And it's like... Sad because her she... Her mother's Japanese, her dad's Nigerian. She took she's... her dad's last name. She's never left the country. Yeah. She's only ever lived she's in She's fully Japan. Japanese, but then she's half ethnically Japanese. But for some reason, that's like difficult for some Japanese people to understand. Yeah, and the article was like pretty heavy with like a bunch of stories that were similar. But mm -hmm. it was bad because she was saying that she sometimes has regretted taking her father's name. Mm. And sometimes she regrets like looking how she looks. That's so sad. And she's like, I always have to explain to people my mm. like origin story. And it's so dumb because she's never left the country. Yeah. So there's stuff like that going on. And these people are like the human rights you of must laughter. Laugh. <laughs> yeah. Or like, <laughs> don't tell us to laugh. Yeah. Sorry that prejudice caused you to lose this job, but you got to laugh today. So. Yeah. At least her fundamental human right is protected to not laugh. <laughs> to laugh or not to <laughs> yeah, laugh. Yeah, to laugh or not to laugh. Well, we really just get to wake up and have that choice every day, huh? <laughs> laugh or not laugh. Mm. Yeah, that, I mean, that's interesting. Yeah, I, was, Their uh, heart's in the right place. It's just a very odd thing to spend time making into an ordinance. Yeah, that ultimately has no consequences. Hmm. They're just heavily encouraging people. <laughs> you must make your best effort. Listen, I make my best effort to laugh every day. Yeah, because of me. Well. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Woo! Do you have a word of the week? I do. Will it make me laugh? No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, let's hear it anyway. It's soji. Hmm. Which like clean? Soji Suru. Yeah, too clean. Oh. Because we've been cleaning. Yeah. Well, my word is nuki. Mm. Mm -hmm. like Have you ever tanuki? heard of this? No. <laughs> Not like the animal. So in a sentence, I'll use it first, see if you can guess. Say we're at a sushi restaurant and I'm ordering sushi. But I say, wasabi nuki de onegaishimasu. What like am I, I asking? I don't want wasabi. Yeah, like hold the wasabi. Oh. Yeah, so nuki is like without or or withholding hmm. or like please don't include it. Can and you use you can, it in any context or just like a restaurant? You can use it in any like in abstract things too, but I don't think my grammar is like good enough to know how to use it in that, but mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be just food. But my friend was using it as, in an example of like, let's say you order a hamburger and you don't want the tomato you can like ask for hamburger tomato nuki day when i was that's just like please weird. but nuki day is like tomato without so yeah you can do just like anything nuki day hmm. yeah it's interesting because she was asking me like i guess i hadn't really thought about this but you know the phrase in english um like hold the hold the ketchup and they don't mean, like, literally hold it, you know? Yeah. But, <laughs> I mean, I know you know, but it makes sense. Like, it's one of those things that I didn't think about would be confusing if I was learning English. Yeah. I mean, And also, sense. like, go easy on the ketchup. Yeah, we have a lot of, like, I guess it's not like a euphemism. What do you call that? I don't know. Something. Yeah. We have a lot of that, I guess, in English. Yeah. But that's how you say... Like, hold your horses. <laughs> Imagine trying to explain that to somebody. Well, it's just I don't like have the any horses. Yojijuku go like the four, the four kanji mm. idioms that ichigo ichie. Exactly, that's one of them. Yep. But yeah. So maybe you can you can use that for something. I don't know what you're gonna. I don't know what you would. I can say hot sauce nuki day on a guy <laughs> There's no hot sauce in Japan. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that one. That's why I love this country. Just the wasabi might get you. Hmm. Well, thanks again for listening this week. I guess yeah, if you made, made it this far. far. It's a great day. <laughs> thanks for being here. <laughs> it's a great day. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll be back here same time next week. So we'll see you then. Yeah, thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Don't forget to laugh. <laughs>